Ahazi for the introduction, uh, most graceful. And I also thank all of you for um, coming to this seminar. Uh, so today I will talk about one of the works that I did during my PhD studies, that is moisture condition assessment of concrete structures using synthetic aperture radar imaging technique, or SAR. And I'll give a brief introduction of the problem statement and also um, talk about GPR and also synthetic aperture radar imaging. And also move on to the image analysis technique and how we were able to apply this um, SAR imaging technique to the detection of moisture inside concrete. And then also go a step ahead, also introduce how we were able to um, include some uncertainties in some empirical models that um, we developed and also conclude uh, with our findings. So um, basically in most developed countries, um, the challenge they face with infrastructure has to do with aging uh, because some of these uh, infrastructures were you know, constructed so many years and as time goes on and as they are in operation, they um, go through various uh, deterioration uh, processes. And in 2021, just last year, I think US, uh, when the, um, the ASC um, graded the infrastructure, it came to C minus, which is um, an improvement uh, because I think in 2012, there about, it was about D. Um, so we've seen some um, improvement here. And when it comes to infrastructure inspection and monitoring um, in the past, um, engineers, civil engineers, we have relied on um, visual inspection, most of the parts. And um, with the advance in technology, a lot of non-destructive inspection techniques uh, have been developed. Um, but this talk will focus more on electromagnetic sensors, um, specifically um, synthetic aperture radar imaging, and also talk briefly about um, ground penetrating um, radar. And um, for these EM sensors, um, their capability, the reason why they are preferred over other um, non-destructive um, sensing technique is that uh, they have this remote capability, um, which means that uh, they can be deployed in areas where accessibility is an issue. And also, um, you can also mount them on moving platforms, um, such as vehicles or even drone um, for the detection of damages. Now for EM sensors, uh, we can use them for multiple purposes, but for civil engineers, basically we can use them to um, quantify defects, um, such as cracks, um, delamination, and also for uh, material characterization. Uh, that is if you want to know the dielectric properties of certain um, construction materials, such as concrete or even timber, we can um, use uh, electromagnetic sensors to uh, do that. So um, GPR has been in existence for a very long time and um, it's commercially available. Uh, the technology has really advanced. We have companies um, you know, developing these techniques and always evolving. Um, one typical one is Coppola, GSSI in the United States. Um, so um, we've been using GPR um, to detect objects that are buried or for um, certain defects in brick decks. And also we have um, dielectric measurement um, network analyzer, which we can also use to characterize the electromagnetic properties of cementitious materials or construction um, materials. So for the, um, the GPR, as I said, it's commercially available and it's well advanced in terms of technology. And we have basically three modes of scan. Uh, we have the A scan, which is a line scanning, and that uh, just gives you information in one particular uh, direction. And then we have the B scan, which um, after the scanning, it gives you an image, so to speak. And then we have the, the C scan, which will give you some like, um, like a volume. 
which you can reprocess to get more information. On the other hand, the synthetic aperture radar imaging, unlike the GPR, um, is relatively new in the context of um, damage detection uh, because SAR also exists in other forms. Um, uh, we use them for uh, remote sensing, if you want to um, analyze uh, forest cover, some um, researchers use it. However, in this particular context um, for detection of damages in civil infrastructures, it's relatively new and it's not um, commercially available. So some of the modes of SAR imaging, um, we have the, um, the spotlight, and that is if you want to really zoom in and get more information. Um, we have the strip map, and that is if you want to be, be able to be efficient and scan um, a larger surface area. We also have the, the scan SAR, which you can use it to get information pretty quick. Uh, for instance, if um, somebody is interested in all the landmarks in, say, Zurich, uh, with the, um, the scan SAR, within a few minutes, you'll be able to um, at least get some information about the area. In this research, the type of scanning mode that we used was the strip map um, scanning mode. So a brief about the um, SAR imaging concept, the one that I used in this study. So basically, um, what we are doing is to just reconstruct um, the space information of the target that we are imaging and to be able to use it to um, describe the condition of the target. So for instance, if we have a concrete specimen and we want to let's say measure the moisture content. Now we subject this concrete to the EM waves and once the, um, the electromagnetic waves interact with the concrete, obviously we get some reflected signals which are also collected. And after going through some image processing techniques, um, we'll be able to reconstruct the image again and then superimpose it in the space domain for um, damage uh, detection. Um, so this is the um, picture of the synthetic aperture radar image system um, that I used um, in my study. So we have um, the power supply, the fan, and then also the radar antenna on the left. And then on the right, that is, um, we have the positioner, which um, we use to control um, the movement of the radar in the cross range direction. And here is a typical um, SAR image. So the figure 11A is just like a 2D SAR image. We have the range information. We also have the, the cross range and we have the amplitudes here. Um, the amplitudes um, do not have units. They don't have fiscal units because after going through uh, the back projection processing, um, the units become meaningless. Therefore, uh, there is no fiscal meaning to that, and therefore the, it is dropped. And, but however, we are able to um, tell, uh, based on the dielectric properties of the material, um, there is a relationship between that and also the, the amplitudes. For instance, um, if a material has high dielectric constant, um, it's the amplitudes are always higher compared to one um, with a low dielectric constant. And for the 3D SAR image, you can see now we have the amplitude information and also the cross range and the range information at the same time. In this example, it was um, a SAR image of concrete um, block. And interpretation of SAR image is very challenging. Uh, there are so many ways that we can interpret the data once you get the data you want to extract more information from data as much as possible. So in this particular uh, study, um, what I used in analyzing the results is what we term as the integrated SAR amplitude. Now it's a very um, simple approach. Um, what uh, I did was to integrate all the amplitudes 
within a selected um, contour or a selected region. And if you can see um, in, the, in the figure on the far left where we have the SAR image, you can see that there is a dark um, contour around the image. Um, before you can even select that one, um, you have to define the noise threshold so that you're able to remove some of the background noise. And then what is left is what is integrated. And after the integration, it was correlated with the, the moisture content, which was later used to develop some empirical um, models. All right, so I'll um, move on to the application of the SAR technique to uh, the detection of moisture. Um, so uh, basically a series of specimens were constructed or were manufactured um, with different varying water cement ratio 0.35 to 0.55. And the, the mix ratio was, was kept the same for all of them. It was more secured and then was left in the laboratory for some time. All right, so um, when the specimens were ready, uh, because our focus was to uh, do a moisture measurement, we had to um, get some ground truth information. So the, the specimens were resubmerged um, in water for some time until it got um, saturated. And then after that, it, it was, after it was picked up from the submerged tank, it was cleaned and then um, the first SAR image was collected. Afterwards, we, we used an oven at a temperature of zero, 105 degrees C to regulate the amount of moisture. So basically, we just put it in the oven, heat it for some time, and then take it out, allow it to cool, and then measure the mass, uh, mass difference, and then take the, the SAR image, and then put it back in the oven. So the idea was to be able to get the SAR image of the concrete specimens at different moisture content. And here is the, the typical setup of, 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 the, of the measurement. You have the SAR, um, the radar box, and also you have the, um, the specimen in the picture. And in this particular um, research, I use the range of 18 centimeters uh, because the, uh, the target was relatively small. So if, if I use um, a longer range, it, it will appear like um, um, a small object. So it was close, I guess, for the purpose of this um, research. All right, so um, after scanning all the, um, the specimens, there's a typical um, SAR image of concrete um, with a water cement ratio of 0.45 and with a moisture content of 4.5%, and another one, the same water cement ratio, but a lower moisture content of 0.76%. Now, if you look at the two from the face value, you could tell that um, the one with the highest moisture content has high amplitudes um, compared with the one um, with the uh, lower moisture content. And the, the dark outline is the actual um, plan um, view of the specimen. Uh, so the maximum amplitude in this case corresponded to the surface of um, this, this specimen. All right. So after that, I also took um, some range and cross range information to, to compare the two. So here we have um, the range and the cross range um, curves, which basically show clear difference between um, the high moisture content and also the, um, the low um, moisture content. Now, after um, getting this information um, with the integrated SAR amplitude, which was um, previously defined, um, we're able to um, come out with this um, empirical model that we call the Ford modeling and realize that it was the, the model and the data were in agreement um, from low water cement, um, low moisture content up to about 3.5%. Um, and beyond, we realized that the results um, was kind of a little bit ambiguous because you see at a point where we have um, even um, 
not flowing, it wasn't consistent compared to from you know the lower water spent, uh, so lower moisture content to about 3.5. Uh, so um, basically, um, the explanation was that once you have a lot of moisture inside your specimen, um, it's very challenging for the star image to be able to um, differentiate among um, different uh, water cement ratio. But in all, you can also see that from this figure, um, at a fixed moisture content, you realize that the integrated star amplitude um, decreases with an increase in um, um, water cement ratio, and which is, is, is reasonable because if you have two extremes, a specimen with low water cement ratio versus a specimen with high water cement ratio, um, the one with low um, um, water cement ratio will have um, less porosity compared with the one uh, with high water cement ratio. So the scattering within the one with low water cement ratio will be lower than the one uh, in the high water cement. And that is the reason why you realize that at a fixed uh, moisture content uh, between, uh, let's say, 0.5 and, and 3.5, um, the integrated sound amplitude decreases with an increase in the water cement ratio. And also, we we're trying to study the effect of the water cement ratio on the model parameters and realize that uh, the, the model parameters were also um, dependent on the various water cement ratios. So then the idea was um, these, this model is just um, a deterministic model, just one empirical model. So um, we wanted to know how sensitive the, um, the model was with regards to the model parameters. And so we played with it and realized that the parameters were actually sensitive to um, little variation. So then we decided to include some level of uncertainties into these model parameters so that um, we'll be able to characterize any um, uncertainty that comes with our measurement. All right, so what basically we did uh, from the inverse model that is the uh, moisture content model, uh, we assumed a normal distribution for all the, um, the model coefficients. And based on that, we're able to um, do a Monte Carlo simulation to um, come up with some um, distribution caps. And we use that as a cumulative distribution function. And out of that, we defined a condition index. So here we have the, the condition, um, the PDFs and also the, the CDF showing um, different um, PDF for different water to cement ratio. So at a fixed, let's say, integrated star amplitude, we see that there are um, differences in terms of how the, um, the moisture is being distributed within the, the specimens. And in this particular um, figure, um, we define what we call the condition index cap. And the purpose of the condition index cap was to be able to associate some level of probability to the uh, moisture content that we will be able to predict um, from the um, star imaging. All right, so here we wanted to um, um, illustrate how we can use this condition index to tell if after taking the measurement, if there is the likelihood of corrosion, as an example, or ASR or um, freestyle. Now, what we used to guide us um, was that for these um, deterrations like corrosion um, due to carbonation, it was reported in literature that if you have moisture content by mass around 3%, um, you are likely to experience some level of corrosion. And also for um, chloride induced corrosion, um, if you have moisture content by mass around 3.5%, you are likely to also um, induce corrosion. ASR uh, will occur with moisture content around 4%, uh, 4 and also free star also about 5%. So what we did is that if we, if we are proposing that if you take, let's say, if you go out to the field and then you measure a particular section that you are interested in to quantify the moisture, after doing that, you process the side image, you compute your 
integrated SAR um, amplitude. And with the integrated SAR amplitude um, going through the modeling, you can also um, develop um, a, a PDF um, from that. And also with that, you get your condition index curve for that particular um, measurement. And then looking at the threshold that has been defined for the variable deterioration to occur, you'll be able to know um, the likelihood for that particular deterioration to occur. So in this particular case, in this example, if you look at the location one, realize that um, for all the deteriorations that we have prescribed, that is for carbon, um, carbonation induced corrosion, um, chloride induced corrosion, ASR, and, and also um, freestyle, we realize that at location one, and none of them will occur. At location two, um, found out that there is about 26% chance that um, corrosion due to carbonation will occur. And also at location three, about 54% chance that ASR will occur and so on and so forth. So we're just using the, um, the thresholds that will induce these deteriorations as a way to predict um, whether these deteriorations will occur. So in, a, in actual sense, we're not um, measuring whether the deteriorations are there, but we are saying that if there is this chance of moisture, then there is this likelihood that these deteriorations will occur. And then from that, we um, propose this um, uh, framework that you develop your um, SAR images with known water cement ratio and perform the SAR um, analysis, you extract quantitative information. In this particular study, we focus on using the integrated SAR amplitude because it really worked well for this um, data. And also it works well with um, non-homogeneous um, kind of specimens. And then you do some quantitative modeling. You perform a sensitivity analysis to know um, the influential model parameters. And then you introduce some um, noise in the model um, parameters to build the, uh, the PDFs through Monte Carlo simulation, and then you can um, construct the condition in this curve. And knowing the threshold for the various uh, moisture conditions, you can then tell the probability that uh, the measurement that you, uh, you have will produce this amount of, um, of um, moisture. So in closing, um, in this study, uh, we've demonstrated the capability of SAR um, for moisture detection and quantification. Um, typically, GPR, as I said, commercial product has been used for these purposes. Um, but SAR is relatively um, young or new when it comes to this area of research. And um, we have demonstrated that capability. And also, um, we propose some empirical models um, for the quantification of moisture content using SAR image. Uh, that's specifically to um, concrete specimens. And also um, propose an approach to be able to account for the uncertainty in some of these empirical models. Um, some of the limitations in this particular uh, work is that we understand that different um, targets will produce different scattering responses. For instance, if we have reinforced um, concrete specimen that, um, that are also wet, uh, we understand that there'll be some kind of coupling between the responses that will come from the concrete, the response that will come from the, um, the reinforcement, and all these uh, um, factors that we need to um, consider for, um, for future um, 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 research. And also, if you have the presence of um, active corrosion, producing corrosion parts, that will also influence um, the responses of the structure to the EM wave. All right, so I would like to take this time to also acknowledge um, the UMass Law uh, EM wave remote sensor lab um, for allowing me to use their system to collect data. And also um, my colleagues, uh, both graduate students and undergraduate research assistants who helped me through the data collection and also my mentors and advisors, supervisors, I'm very grateful to them for their support. And then these are the, the funding that I received at the time that I was doing my PhD. Um, so I'm also grateful to the funding agencies. All right, so these are the references if you want to read more. And I have a paper, um, two papers um, that is reference um, six, 
and reference four, and they are directly related to um, this particular work. And for reference five is another paper that I did with my uh, previous advisor, uh, which we also published in ACS. So if you want more information about how to use SAR uh, to integrate concrete structures, you can refer to these um, papers. All right, so that brings me to the end of um, this talk. And I thank you so much for your attention.